Hi, I'm Kathy Cook. Welcome to part three of Iyengar Yoga for Beginners. In today's class, we'll focus on forward bending, both standing and seated. I'll introduce a variety of props, which will help you gain a better understanding of the actions in the pose, create more space and length. Let's get started. Okay, so sitting in Sukhasana, have your calves crossed, have your feet underneath your knees so that the calves and the knees can descend down and you have that stable base. So have a block or a blanket, something to support your hips and sit evenly on both sitting bones, crossing the calves. Feel that the sides of the feet or the fronts of the feet are on the floor, descend the knees and the thighs. So they're in a downward movement. As you lift up, you bring your hands onto your thighs. You can take your hands to the back, fingertips on the floor or on the block, and lift up. Lift from the back armpit chest to the front armpit chest, collarbones wide, move your shoulders back. Create some length from the pubic bone all the way up through the front body. So lifting the sternum up away from your pubic bone and taking that length all the way up across the chest over the shoulders and descend the shoulders, descend the shoulder blades. Take a few breaths there. Now we'll take the block out. Take the block forward on your mat. We're going to come into forward Virasana, Adho Mukha Svarasana. Your knees are wide your toes are together, sit back on your heels, just making sure that the thighs are spread enough so that that side trunk can come through. And then walk your hands forward. Use your placement of your fingertips on the mat to first lift up and lengthen. And as you lengthen forward, the, that tendency to move your hips forward comes. So sit back heavy on your heels, Keep the hips moving back, thighs heavy, lengthen the front body. So I brought my fingers through the front body. That skin and flesh of the abdomen sometimes gets stuck, so lengthening, lengthen through the front body again. Have that block, you saw that I turned the block, so if you need more height, take the block higher. I'm pressing onto my palms, drawing my fingers back to lengthen my arms, to activate the arms, to activate that movement of the shoulders drawing back toward the hips. And now we're coming into Parjva Virasana, so I'm walking the hands over to my left, extend the left arm, keep the hips descending down, so the outer left hip moving down, extend through that whole left side and turn the right chest up. So the right chest likes to move down toward the floor. So using that bottom arm to help you get that little bit more turn. Coming back to the center, taking a few breaths in the center. Reestablishing the hips back toward the heels. And now walking forward with the other arm. So your right arm is coming forward extending from that right hip all the way through that right side trunk, through the right outer armpit chest. So hips moving down. Use the other arm, bend the elbow, press it into the floor, and get that turn of that side of the trunk. Those, are the, those ribs like to move down toward the floor, so getting that lift as you lengthen through the right side. And then coming back to forward Virasana, extend Toes moving back, shins moving down, thighs descending. Lift the fingers again, activate the arms, so the arms and the shoulders move back toward the hips. Quiet breath. And then coming up, take your block over to the side. And you'll come up and stand now in, we'll get ready for Uttanasana with the chair. So take your chair and have the chair seat facing toward the wall, a little bit away from the wall, about one leg's distance away, so you can eyeball that. And then sit down in the front of the chair. You want your sitting bones 
on the edge of the chair. You can spread the buttocks so you're right on the sitting bones and extend your legs to the wall. So here, you want the heads of the femur bones descending down so you can feel the thigh bones firmly in that front part of the chair and extending the legs, the knees are straight, kneecaps are lifted. And as I move forward, I'm lifting the lower abdomen up. So untucking that skin that gets trapped there and then lengthening forward. Press your hands into the wall, extend up through the side trunk, right up through the arms. So feel the front groin deepening. So that's right there where the pelvis and the hip are coming together. And back groin, right where you're at the chair, lengthening towards your sitting bones. And then coming up, bend your knees. And you'll stand up now. You can take the chair a little bit further away you're going to bring the hands on the chair seat and then bring your hips to the wall. So for this, you move your feet away from the wall. You can actually take your hands on your hips and lift the back of the thighs up, lift the sitting bones up. So there's a rotation of the pelvis around the head of the femur bone. And then again, lengthen through the front body, front chest, extend the arms, have both feet stable even on the inner and outer edges of both feet pressing into the feet lift the kneecaps up so not pressing the knees back toward the wall but tightening the kneecaps lifting up through the front thigh front of the thigh descending back toward that sitting bone so the sitting bone is, was at the wall now <clears throat> that was the same as when you were seated now we're coming forward bringing the sitting bones away from the wall but still having that same contact or the feeling of that contact as you had at the wall. Lift up through the backs of the thighs. Now here I brought my head onto the chair so you can still lengthen but you rest your head. Hands on the side rail. That way you're still coming into Uttanasana, a forward bend. Depends if you need a little break, you can bring the head onto the chair and just work on the action of the legs. Okay, so now we're going to take one block. So you take that block and bring it between the thighs. So I have it on the narrower edge of the block and running um, diagonal from the pelvis down to just above the knees. And bring the feet in close so that you're able to hold that block with the thighs. So as you have that block there, you want to keep, hold the block so it doesn't fall. So you're pressing the outer thighs in. And there's a slight roll to the inner thighs. That you're rolling the block back toward the wall so that inner thigh is rotating back, front thigh is moving toward the wall, back thigh is lifting up toward your sitting bones, up toward the pelvis. Just readjust the block until you feel that you can hold the block and then roll it back slightly as you extend your arms. So that engagement of the legs will help you to get that mobility that you need in the pelvis. So now I'm walking forward, I'm just adjusting the block again. And I've moved the chair forward. So you move the chair forward as you need to so you can get that length. All right, keep the, the block, holding the block. So I have a wooden block. So that requires that I really grip the block with my outer thighs. So my thighs are strong, my legs are strong. If you have a foam block, it's less chance of it dropping, but just imagine that you had a wood block. And then coming up, take the block, roll the block back, lift the block, lengthening forward, extend, hips moving back, backs of the thighs lifting up toward the sitting bones, getting that rotation of the buttocks, and then walk your hands onto the chair legs and lengthen forward. So we're coming down a little bit further. If that's too much for you and the back is rounding, keep your arms higher. You can also take your hands on the shins, bend the elbows out to the side and release the head. If the back is too rounded, stay up a little bit more and stay with the concave back until you can get that awareness in the back muscles. And then inhale, come up. Now you can take the block away, remove the block. 
and I'm bringing both blocks, the two blocks, to the wall so you can see it. They're slanted. So when you slant the block like that, uh, you have to make sure that it can support you. So there's that, or you can bring the blocks down. So I'm bringing the blocks down so we can have a little bit more height, bring the toes onto the blocks, and the heels up on the wall. So here, especially if you have more tightness in the pelvis, the hamstrings, this helps to give you that ability to straighten the legs more. So press the heels into the wall, lift the thighs up, roll the inner thighs back toward the wall like you had that block, and then come out. So I'm moving the chair now, and I, I'll put the block right between my legs again, like I had for Uttanasana, and come into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. So I'm coming onto the knees, and I will establish the distance that I need, make sure the block is secure, make sure there's nothing around you that's going to disturb you so that you can go up into the pose. And just have the hands spread wide, shoulder width apart, pressing the fingers down, pressing the mounds of the hands down, lift up through the palm of the hand, lift up through the arms, get that same extension you had with the chair, and then come onto the toes like we did with the toes on the block, lifting the heels, and then as you bring the heels back, work to extend the calf down towards your heel. Move the inner thighs back, rolling the block back, as you extend the calf down to the heel, keep the lift of the backs of the thighs. So the legs are moving in two directions in the back leg. And then come back. So Adho Mukha Virasana. And then we're coming back up to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now, coming back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, come onto your toes, engage through the legs, draw the kneecaps up, pull the inner thighs back, move the fronts of the thighs back. So the more weight you bring into your legs, the better. Sometimes because the shoulders are stiff, the, the weight goes to the shoulders. So keep the arms pressing down, lifting up through the arms, and move the weight back. Now I'm stepping forward to the center of the mat, Coming back into Uttanasana, you can have the hands on your calves and stay in this concave position. If the back is extending, you can start to bring the hands onto the floor. Keep the hands shoulder width apart, lengthen, and then release the head down. So I have my hands on my calves. You can have your calves or bring the hands down onto the floor, beside the toes. Take a few breaths there. Coming out the way you went in, hands underneath the shoulders, concave the back. Taking a few breaths, hands on your hips. Inhale, come up. Stay engaged with the legs the whole time. And then take the block away. And now we're going to get ready to do Parsvottanasana with the chair. Standing in Tadasana. So I have the chair again, two blocks, and I'm coming forward. Like in Uttanasana, extend the arms. And now you bring your right leg forward, your left heel back. So you bring the right leg forward. Now our hips are more parallel to one another. So move the outer right hip back and move the left hip forward as you press the left heel down into the wall and the floor. Lengthen that left leg forward. As you press the right foot into the floor, move that right hip back, right front growing back, and extend and lengthen through the trunk. Taking a few breaths there. Your hands higher, then take the hands on the blocks. You can have to take the higher version of the block and concave the back. Moving the hip back, press into the legs, inhale, come up, stand back in Tadasana. Taking a few breaths there, and then take your right leg back. Stabilize yourself with the chair if you need to. So you're turning that right hip forward, drawing that left hip back. 
extend the arms up. As you press that left foot into the floor, draw the left hip back. As you press the right heel toward the wall, draw that right hip forward. As if you had a, something between on either side of the legs, starting to move the hips together. Hands on the blocks, lengthen, take a few breaths, and then inhale, come up, turn the feet, walk the feet forward, come back to Tadasana. So standing in Tadasana now, we're going to go to Parsvottanasana with the blocks. So we use the chair for Parsvottanasana. Now we're coming in the same pose, but without the chair. So you're bringing your right leg forward, left leg back, coming forward, extend, pressing the heel to the wall, pressing the front foot down into the floor, draw the hip back, and then take the height of the blocks that you need to get that extension. So first, creating that extension, bringing awareness into the back body, moving the back ribs into the body, shoulder blades down towards your hips and in towards your chest, and then walk the blocks back. Hands on the blocks, you'll bend the elbows out to the side, and as you press the hands into the blocks, move the shoulders back, away from the back of the head. Keep that compact action with your hips. So remember the block we were holding between the legs, as if you were still holding that block with the outer thighs moving in, rolling the inner thighs back. And then inhale, lift up, bring the blocks back. Look up, hands on your hips. Inhale, come up, walk your foot back. And then we'll do the other side. Bring your heel back to the wall. So reaching that heel back. So you want it to have that heel to be in contact. So it's a source of stability, but it's also a place of leverage. So as you press that heel, you can move that hip forward. As you press the front foot, you can move that hip back. So both hips are moving towards the center of gravity, towards the center line. And then taking the higher blocks as you need, keeping that compact action, inner thighs still rolling back, outer thighs still moving toward the center, toward that median line. You can bring the blocks down a bit, still lengthen. So use your breath, inhale, lengthen, Exhale, breastbone moving forward, and then turn the blocks down if you can. If not, then keep the blocks on the higher height. Walk your hands back a little bit. Press the hands down, straighten the arms. Lengthen one more time. Shoulders moving away from the back of the head. Legs active. Outer hip coming forward, left hip moving back. Press the fingertips down, pressing the heel of the hand down, and then begin to bring the head to look down. So not coming all the way into it, we just brought the head down, so you're looking down at the floor, and then inhale, come up. Ready to stand up. Bring your awareness back to the legs, back to the feet. Inhale, come up, bend the knee, bring your foot forward, standing in Tadasana. All right, so now, Baddha Hastasana Uttanasana. So you can take your blocks to the side and stand in Tadasana. Have your feet spread, hips width apart. This is resting Uttanasana. Have your hands on your elbows and lengthen up. So opening the armpit chest, shoulder blade moving in. Lengthen the side trunk. So you're leading with the elbows. Elbows and arms stay in line with the back of the head as you lengthen. As you come forward now, shifting your weight so that you bring more weight onto your toes. So your hips shift over the heels, over the ankles. So there's one line there. You're still Activating the legs, lifting the kneecaps, rolling the inner thighs back, lifting the backs of the thighs. Keeping that compact action, look up, inhale, come up. 
And then coming back to the wall, we'll do the same thing. Resting Uttanasana, Baddha Hastasana, and Uttanasana. Bring your arms up, shoulder blades down. When you come forward, lifting the backs of the thighs, allow that pelvis to rotate over the head of the femur bone as you come forward. Still lengthening, get that length. If you feel your back starting to round, pause there and breathe into it. Lengthen the front ribs and then release your head down. So now this is more of a resting pose. You're at the wall. More support. Stay even on your feet. Balancing between the front foot and the back foot. And then inhale, lift your arms and your head and your shoulders, and come up. And then we'll stand in Tadasana. And you're going to, we're next going to practice Padang Ustasana with the strap. So you will get your strap, Padang Ustasana. So Padang Ustasana, you're going to bring the strap around the toes and bending forward, hold on to that strap and lift your arms until you can feel that the back is straight. If the back is rounded, come higher up that strap. So pull the toes with the hands on that strap. Arms are straight, elbows are not bent. So now I'm going to take the block again between the thighs, the same as we did earlier for that Uttanasana action. So you still are maintaining that outer thigh moving in, inner thigh rolling back, and then take your toes. If you can't take your toes, take that strap like we just showed, like I just showed, and pull up on the toes. Straight arms, lift your shoulders, concave your back. So that action gives you a strong, strong work in the arms connecting into the shoulder into the socket, into the upper thoracic cavity, and then bring that upper body in, concave action. Inhale, come up. And then you can take your block out and set the block down. And then stand back in Tadasana. And then coming forward again, to Padang Ustasana again. Just bring your hands forward first, stabilize yourself, shift your weight, take your hands again on the toes. So we did it with the block before. So if you still need the strap, use the strap underneath the toes, pull. And then for the final pose, bend the elbows, release your head down, and come closer in towards your legs. You can stay in that concave back position as well until you're able to start to get more length. And then we'll come back to that straight position, concave. Walk your hands forward, lengthen from your arms to your shoulders to your side trunk and lift up. Inhale. Release your hands down. Tadasana. Stand in Tadasana, taking a few breaths. All right, we'll practice Prasarita Padatanasana now. We're going to have a chair and we're going to use the wall again. So in all these preparation poses or um, poses more for beginners, until you can get the body familiar with the action, it's best to try and use these props. Even if you are familiar with the poses, it's always good to come back and see each pose through the eyes of a beginner. Where are you? balancing, where are you not balancing, what part's working, what's not working. So when we use the chair, we use the blocks, we use the wall, we can see how much we're actually active in the pose, what needs to be more activated. So first, lengthening the arms on the chair, and just make sure you adjust the chair so that you can use it. So I'm pressing the thighs back strongly, now we're using the wall to feel the back of the thighs, as if you still had the block rolling the inner thighs toward the wall, outer thighs moving towards one another, and the backs of the thighs lifting up toward the sitting bones. Again, the pelvis is rolling over the head of the femur bones, and you're lengthening forward. Hands on the blocks. We step down off the chair, hands on the blocks. We can then bring the chair closer, and you can rest your head on the chair. 
moving the hands lower on the blocks. You can even take the blocks on the floor or the hands on the floor. So depending on your body's capability, if it's easier to take your hands on the floor, then do that. And then you'll walk your hands in, walk your toes and your feet in, come up, take the chair away. And then we'll just use the blocks now. So taking the chair away, coming into Prasarita Padatanasana again, we're using the blocks and the wall. So bring your heels to the wall. To start out with, you have to bring your heels a little bit away from the wall to go into this. And then once you're, you've got your hands on the floor or the blocks, you bring your heels in again to the wall. So the calf is against the wall, the thigh is against the wall. And you have that action of moving that direction of moving toward the wall with the whole back of the thigh. The calf is descending down, thighs are spreading, sitting bones are spreading. And then use your hands on the blocks to keep that direction of the legs and the pelvis and then take the blocks away, have your hands on the floor. And you can take your hands, press your hands down and bend your elbows. So the elbows are moving straight back toward the wall, coming down on the crown of the head. If you're not quite reaching the floor, that's okay. Now lengthening, walking forward, walking in. Keep the heels at the wall, lengthen the arms forward. And then from there, press with the hands, move the hips back, move the thighs back, move the calves back into Uttanasana. Imagine that block again between your legs, rolling the inner thigh back and then step forward, hands on your hips, inhale, come up. So that's something you can practice a little bit more. Thighs against the wall, moving back, using the hands. All right, so now we will go into Virasana. So we'll sit down and I'd like you to use a block for this. You can also have blankets handy. So for Virasana, you'll bring your knees together and then extend your calves back. I have my thumbs, I'm taking them right in the back of the knee, spreading the calf, moving it out to the side. And the sides of the feet are right on the outer side of the hips. So I'm not sitting on the heels. The heels are on the outside of the hips and the thighs. Toes are moving straight back. And then I have one block that I'm taking behind me. We're gonna practice Barbhajasana. So take your Right arm back, extend it open through that left shoulder, bring your left arm up, the hand on the thigh, keep the arm straight, left hand forward, right hand back. Press the hand, and as you press that arm, start to rotate towards your right side. So moving from the center toward that back hand on the block, Open the shoulder girdle, turn the tops of the shoulder, using that backhand on the block to support you so that the spinal column stays lifted vertically. And then come back to the center. And then taking your other hand on your outer thigh near your knee, bring the hand back behind you. Support that hand on the block and lift up through that side trunk with the front hand, pressing it against the thigh, using a, a bit of a leverage to lift up through that whole side of the trunk. And then move your back ribs forward, turn your right chest back. Keep the hips weighted, keep the fronts of the ankles descending, so the thighs are descending. So that action that we've been using with the legs in our standing poses, still moving down. In our standing poses, we were moving back. Here, the thighs descending. All right, and then we're gonna come into Dandasana now. So you'll straighten both legs out in front of you. And just adjust your seated position again. Be right on the center of the heels. And we'll take the strap. So we'll be practicing Trianga Mukha Pada Paschimottanasana. So here, just in Dandasana, get a straight back, lifting up, side of the trunk lifting, thighs descending, taking a few breaths. 
Yeah. Take your right leg back. Be right on the ankle like we were in Virasana, making space behind the knee. So here, I'm going to come off the block, and I'm just going to use a blanket. You can use a block if you, that's the only thing you have, if you have a blanket. You can take that blanket and bring it just under the sitting bone. So this left side is on the blanket, and the right side is moving down into space a little bit. Okay? But you have the foot there, so the foot is supporting it as well. All right, so reestablish your position on both hips, outer hips moving towards one another, getting that rotation, the same rotation we had in the standing poses where the inner thighs are descending down, outer hips compact, lifting from the lower back, lengthening up. And then take your strap right on the foot. So the dandasana leg, the straight leg, the kneecap is lifting up. The calf is descending towards your heel, lengthening the front body as you begin to move forward. Keep your elbows bent as you go forward. So that connection from the arms to the elbows and then from the elbows to the upper arm, connect the upper arm to the shoulder girdle. And as you come down, you then can move your elbows forward. So it's not so much about going down as lengthening forward. So the sense of direction is from your hips toward the crown of the head and keeping that extension. Inhale, come up, breathe, and then we'll come back up. Come back to Dandasana. So bringing your left leg forward. Bring your other leg back. Shift your blanket. Bring your left foot back. Be right on the front of the foot. If you have any tension in the front of the ankle, you can always support by a little bit more height, sitting up a little bit higher. The thighs are descending. Fingertips. Using the fingertips to lift up. I'm adjusting my calf. Sometimes that muscle gets stuck. So adjust it, widen it, and then lift up again creating that length through the front body as you begin to come forward. Extension, fingertips on the floor, reground through the hips, so outer hips moving down, especially that bent knee, hip, descending that, pressing the thigh down, keeping the contact with the foot on the floor. And now you can come up and take your strap. Using the strap to help you to get that length, but also a sense of direction, the, the direction that you're moving and connecting. If you can't take your hands on your foot, then you have the strap, which then helps you to connect the arms into the shoulder so sockets. And the sh arms are part of the shoulder girdle, part of that upper thoracic body that needs to move. So it helps us to get more access there. Looking down, not dropping your head. Keep the head parallel. Inhale, come up. And then you'll take your strap away. Come back to Dandasana. Straighten your legs out. Shift your blanket so you're on both sitting bones on that blanket. And now we'll practice Marichi Asana. So you're taking your left leg and bending it. Be right on the foot, so be on all four corners of that foot. Lift up, let your leg lean out to the side without coming onto the outer edge of the foot, and then come down, bring your outer shoulder, outer upper arm, press it against that leg as you let the leg press against the arm, and with that, create a little bit of a twist. So I had a block behind me, or I didn't have the block, so now I'm taking the block so that because we're on a little bit of height, that hand might not reach down. Use that block to help you gain that length through that side of the trunk and turn. Use the breath to lengthen, exhale, turn. Come back to Dandasana, and then we'll go to the other side. So bending the knee, right knee. So when you bend the knee, that from the knee to the femur bone is dropping down into that sitting bone. 
and then lengthen forward using your foot pressing into the floor. Lengthen the side trunk forward and catch the outer shoulder, catch the upper arm and the elbow. Take the hand back on that block and then start to open through that left shoulder, left arm, bringing the left shoulder blade into the body. Take the height that you need. So you're using that as a little bit of leverage also and sense of direction. Not pushing behind, beyond your means, but using it for height, length, and direction. Extend the legs, breathe, come back to Dandasana. Toes are moving back towards you. Legs are active. And now we'll come into Janusha So I've turned my blanket a little bit so that when I bend this right leg, I can bring the heel in close to the head of the left thigh. And that leg is rotating. It's externally rotating at the top of the femur bone. So the knee is coming out to the side. And that buttock is turning under. Okay, so now we'll use the strap again. So you take the strap around the foot, holding onto that strap, get that length through the front body from the pubic bone up to the navel, up to the chest. So use your inhalation to create that space. As you come forward, keep pressing down with the right knee, the right thigh. So that leg is moving in a different direction. You're moving forward, that leg is descending rotating from the inner thigh to the outer thigh. Your elbows bent, lengthen forward. Your dandasana leg, your straight leg, backs of the thigh is broad and wide. Calf is lengthening toward the heel. Soften your breath. Inhale, come up. And then you'll take that strap away. And then we're going to practice Janya Shishasana on the other side. So I've I've adjusted the blanket to the side, externally rotating that left leg now. As you can see, it's externally rotating from the inner to the outer. And that buttock is rolling under. So the back buttock's not lifting up, descending. From the lower back, the lower back towards your hip bones, from the back toward the front, those hip bones are moving towards one another. All right, descending the thigh, right thigh down, extending the calf, keep the foot active, toes spread, moving towards you, lengthen the arms, bring that thoracic body in toward the chest, and then begin to move forward. Taking a few breaths, feeling the middle back body, breathe into that, lift the front chest, sternum bone lifting forward, Soften your breath, move with your breath. So move with the inhalation to lengthen, move with the exhalation to release down. Keep the elbows lifted. So across the back, the back body, again with this pose, you're coming forward. The back ribs, turn the back ribs down toward the floor of the bent knee. So your left ribs toward the floor. Inhale, come up. So often we go in poses and we don't know what's happening to our back body. So just be aware that it may not be doing what you think it's doing. So we get this tightness in our back, especially the middle back. So just be aware of that and adjust. Breathe into it. So we can bring more flexibility there, which will help with our shoulders and our neck and our lower back. Sitting in Dandasana. Dandasana will go forward. Like in Uttanasana when we were standing, we had the block between the legs. Imagine that block again. So the legs are inner thighs rolling down, outer thighs gripping the block, kneecaps are lifted, calves are descending. So as the thighs descend, the calf is lengthening, a slight upward movement. And then with your elbows bent, begin to come forward. So if your back starts to round, don't 
don't take yourself lower. Just work on breathing into the back body so you can start to soften those muscles. If you continue to come down with a very rounded back, then you, you don't learn anything through the body. The body learns through experience and time. So breathe, soften. Be better to stay in a concave position. For those of you who can go a little bit deeper, bring the head parallel to the floor. And then coming back up to this concave position, which is a perfectly fine position to be in until you can start to get more awareness and be able to move further forward. Urdhva Hastasana arms, bring the arms up and then bring the hands down and then taking the strap now for, uh, we'll just put it to the side. We won't use the strap right now. Coming into Viparita Karani. So we just practiced Paschimottanasana, Urdhva Hastasana and Dandasana, and now coming to the wall, Viparita Karani. So for your homework, you can practice all of these Sanskrit names. So Viparita Karani, it means quiet lake. So you'll be moving your hips to the blanket and swiveling the legs up and around. So the legs are at the wall. And then you come up, lift your hips up, and you can take the legs as close to the wall as you can get them. And then take your strap on the legs. And bring the strap on the heel so you feel the connection with the heels moving down into the hip socket. So you can see I've adjusted my hips closer, and so I needed to adjust my blankets. So I brought the blankets in a bit. so. The thighs are descending. There's a little space between the hips and the thighs and the wall, but not too much, just enough to drop down. With my hands on that strap, I'm drawing the calf muscle, the thigh muscle, down into the hip socket. The legs are straight, which is the same thing that we've been practicing with all the standing poses, Uttanasana, with that same compactness. And then just with the shoulders rolled under, let your arms rest on the floor. Be right on the center of the back of the head. And let your face become quiet. You can release that strap. No longer do you need to do that. Pulling down action. And just release. But as you practice, you might want to hold that a little bit longer so you get that sense of direction. But after a while, you can just feel the legs releasing down into the hips naturally with each breath. And then you'll take your strap away and roll onto your right side. Coming into Adho Mukha's Virasana with the blanket now. So I'm just going to show you here that I'm going to take this blanket and roll it. You could use a towel as well. And I'm bringing it right to the head of the femur bone and where the hips join, where I've been grabbing that abdominal flesh and that skin and moving it up. So especially if you have any kinds of lower back issues, this extra support moving the abdomen toward the lower back will help to release the lower back. It's a very restful pose, even if there's no lower back issue. So I'm bringing the block and the blanket for underneath the forehead. When you put the forehead onto the blanket, you want the skin moving down toward the nose. So it's a more restful direction for the skin of the head versus moving up, which is more active. So the hands are serving you to lengthen the arms, lengthen through the side trunk. I'm just coming into this resting pose, taking a few breaths here, feeling the work of the blanket on the abdomen and the lower back. Let your breath relax. So I'm coming up now and moving the blanket to the side. 
And I have one block and one blanket between my feet. And then I'm lifting up and I'm bringing the hips right on the lower block and bringing my feet, soles of the feet together, on that blanket and on that block. If they're slipping, you could also put the end of your mat over the block and then put the blanket on top or the mat over your blanket. But here, I'm not slipping, so I didn't feel the need, but just see how you feel. So the tailbone is supported on that block. And we're getting a little bit of release in the groin. We've been doing a lot of forward bending with that depth in the groin. So here, there's a little bit of opening through the front groin. Chest is lifted, shoulders are rolling under, and the chest lifts the heart heart being in an inversion and then you can take the block away and I'm going to roll the blanket up and just show you another version here when you're in that pose if you have any kind of discomfort in your hips you can take a blanket and roll it put it on the outer side of the hips and you can use it with the block underneath the hip like we did earlier, or just come into this position with the hips on the floor and the outer legs supported. Your whole back is on the floor, shoulders descending. Relax the breath. Just allow the knees and thighs to descend with gravity. And then bring the knees together. Take your blanket to the side, roll over to your side and get ready for Shavasana. So here we'll have one blanket for the head. You can fold the blanket or have it flat, just depending on how your shoulders are. If you can release your arms down, your shoulders down, and create space in the neck, then little or no blanket is needed. But if you have, when you put your head down, if the chin is coming up toward the ceiling, then take a little bit more support under the head. So the blanket goes right up to the shoulders. I'm bending my knees, dropping the, the lengthening the pelvis. I have a blanket and a block on the tops of the thighs and reaching the feet down releasing the inner legs down. I'm lengthening the back of the head, bringing that blanket right up to the shoulders so the whole neck is supported. And here, my arms are turned completely right at the top of the shoulders, so the shoulder blades moving down, arms are turning out. So I'm maintaining that small lift in the chest. Just allow the breath to release all of those heavy parts, the heels, calves, the thighs, the pelvis, and the shoulders. Just allow the breath to help you release. Observe if there's any tension in your body. Let your breath move to those areas and let your exhalation help you to release further and further. making your exhalation longer. Have a sense of letting down, letting go. Feeling the heaviness of the head, the softness of the face, of the temples, relaxing the jaw. Allowing yourself to just move inward with each breath. You can just be there. Preparing to come out, begin to deepen your breath. Feeling the depth of the breath moving through the upper body, the pelvis. 
through the arms and the legs. And when you're ready, you can t take the hands onto the block, take the block away, bend the knees, take the blanket away, and you'll roll onto your right side. So resting completely on your upper arm and your shoulder, and then pressing yourself up, come back into a seated position. Adjust yourself, sit evenly, sit upright, come back to the breath. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. If you've learned something today, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell, which will tell you the next new class coming up. If you have any questions, just leave your comments in the section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you. You can find the link to the last two videos below, so be sure to check them out. See you in the next class.